This is part 70 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to set and get multiple cookies in JavaScript. This is continuation to part 69, so please watch part 69 before proceeding. When we click this set cookie button, we want to store these three key value pairs in three different cookies. And when we click get cookie button, we want to retrieve all those three key value pairs from the three cookies. So let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous session. So at the moment, we are using a custom object. And this custom object has got three properties, name, email, and gender. And then we are converting this custom object into a JSON string using json.stringify method. And that JSON string we are then storing in the cookie of the document object. Now let's see how to store these three different key value pairs in three different cookies. So let's modify this set cookie function. So we don't require this custom object anymore. Let's get rid of that. And within the document objects cookie property, we are going to first store the first name value pair. Name equals whatever is the name that the user has entered into the name text box. Similarly, within the second cookie, we are going to store email. So email equals whatever email the user has entered into the email text box. And finally, gender. So again, document.cookie equals gender equal to whatever is the gender within the gender text box. And that's it. So let's throw in a breakpoint in this function and let's run this page in debug mode. Let's provide values for name, email, and gender. And let's click the set cookie button. So it should hit that breakpoint. At the moment, notice what we have in the cookie property of the document object. We don't have any cookies at all. So the document.cookie property actually returns an empty string. Now let's press F10 and execute that statement. Now let's look at what we have in the cookie property. Notice that within the cookie property now, we have one name value pair, name equals Venkat. Now, when I press F10 one more time, Look at that within the cookie property. We now have two name value pairs, name equals Venkat, email equals goodvenkat at gmail.com. Now let's press F10 one more time. So let's look at the string here. Notice that we have all the three name value pairs. And look at that, each name value pair is separated by semicolon and then a single space character. Okay, so at the moment, within the document, uh, cookie property of the document object, we have a single string with all the three name value pairs. So now let's see how to retrieve all those three name value pairs from the cookie property of the document object. Let's modify this get cookie function. So we know that at the moment, within the cookie property, we have a string that looks like this. So what I'm going to do here within this getCookie function is create a variable. Let's name this cookies array. And then document.cookie property is going to return us a string that looks like uh, this. And we want to split this string using equal to, I mean, using semicolon and a single space character as the separator. And when we split this string using that as the separator, we are going to get a string array back. And that string array will contain three strings. And each string will look like this. So the first string will contain name equals Winkert. The second string will contain email equals goodwinkert at gmail.com. And the third string will contain gender equals male. OK, so let's go ahead and split that string. And the separator is going to be semicolon and a single space. So that should give us a string array back, which contains three strings. Now let's use a for loop. For var i equals 0, i less than cookies array dot length, i plus plus. So let's start with 0.
let's create another variable here. Let's call this name value array. So now if you look at each of this string, what do we have in it? We have the name and we have the value. So we want to split that string as well. And this time we are going to split the string using equal to as the separator. And that is going to give us another string array back which contains two strings. The first string will contain the name and the second string will contain the value. Okay? So let's go ahead and split cookies array of phi using equal to symbol as the separator. If name value array of zero, if that is equal to name, then retrieve name text box and the value is going to be name value array of 1. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the same thing for email and the email text box ID is txt email and finally for gender and gender text box is txt gender okay so with all these changes Let's run the page in debug mode. Let's throw in a breakpoint and get cookie function as well. Let's provide values for name, email, and gender. Let's click set cookie, press F5. Now let's hit, let's run this one more time. So name equals Venkat, email equals goodvenkat at gmail.com, gender equals male, set cookie, let's press F5, and now let's click get cookie. So it should come into get cookie function. So when we press F10 within the cookies array, we should have three string arrays. Okay? And now we are going to loop through each string array. So when we split the first string within the name value array, we should have two strings, name and Venkat. And since name value of array of zero is equal to name, it's going to come inside and it's going to set the value to name value array of one. And if you look at name value array of one, what do we have? We have the name of the person. So we are setting that as the value within the name text box. So let's press F10. Uh, F5 and look at that, the values are displayed within the respective text boxes. Let's actually detach the debugger and let's clear what we have here in the form fields and then when we click this get cookie, look at that, we get uh, name, email and gender of the person. Now at the moment, you know, we have the cookies, that's why this code is working as expected. But if we don't have anything within the cookie property of the document object, then we want to display a message saying cookie not found. So if we want to do that, let's include an if condition. If document.cookie.length not equal to zero, if the length is not equal to zero, then do all this. Otherwise, alert a message saying cookie not found. All right, let's run this one more time. And you know we don't have any cookies at the moment, so when I click get cookie, notice that it says cookie is not found. If there is a cookie, let's say for example, if we provide only uh, values for name and gender. And then when we click get cookie, look at that. It still says cookies not found. That's basically because we didn't hit the set cookie button. So let's click set cookie. And when we click cookie, look at that. We get the respective values. Clear. Click on get cookie. We get those values. 
and here are the two functions that we have just discussed set cookie and get cookie thank you for listening and have a great day